geeks. <laughs> Care to expand? Um, <laughs> with you say today, uh, it seemed like his confidence was very obvious uh, out there. How does that impact his actual pitching when he is committing to what he's doing? Yeah, I mean, I think that's good for anyone, especially him, um, kind of carrying over. You know, it's kind of been all year, you know, when you look back to spring. But, you know, I think just him kind of evolving a little bit too. Curveball, great pitch. Changeup was a good pitch today um, to kind of keep hitters off of the slider and the heater. But when he's convicted, I mean, I think he forgets sometimes he's got 96, 97 in the tank too. But um, he's, he's in a good spot right now after his last two for sure. But he's been, he's been pretty consistent for, for a good while now. As he's made this more, more recent adjustment to getting back to this good swing, has that mental, not hurdle, but that mental adjustment been part of that, just recognizing that his stuff is good when he throws it? Yeah, I think so, and not being afraid. I mean, you think back to last year, and he's in a 2-0 count, and you, and, you, know, you can kind of see him getting a little you know, tense, and it's the exact opposite right now. You feel comfortable with him in any count. Um, I think he dropped a 3-0 curveball into Rooker there, and it's just... I think, yeah, when he's mentally knows that his stuff is good and, you know, he's really convicted with the game plan, it's just way easier to go execute. Uh, John Springer moved into second place all time for, for leadoff homers. What, what do you think of that accomplishment, and what does that say about the longevity and consistency he's had through his It's career? a hell of an accomplishment for him. Um, you know, that's a pretty... That's a pretty cool stat. You know, what does he have, like 25 or 30 to go to catch Ricky? You know, he's got to play for a while, I think. But, it, you know, it jump starts the offense. Um, you know, guys know that, you know, he's capable of leaving the yard like that. It's, it's cool that he's been able to do that for that long and that, you know, leadoff spot is tough. You know, he's not the prototypical leadoff guy. Um, I don't know if there is one in today's game, really, but it's a, it's a really cool feat and definitely got us going today. Um, he got off to a little bit of a slow start this year, but I mean the numbers he's been putting up for the last like month plus have, been, have seemed to have been pretty typical Springer. What what is the difference that you're seeing now between him and where he was earlier? Not much, to be honest with you. I mean, I think when he was kind of grinding, you know, thinking back to when we were playing in Houston, I believe. I mean, he's hitting balls hard and um, was kind of unlucky, but it's uh, when he's swinging at the right pitch, you know, he's he's as dangerous as anyone. Um, but I, I don't think anything has really changed. It's not mechanical. It's not mental. It's um, I think you kind of go through a little bit of a rough patch over the course of the year. But um, if he can, you know, just be him, you know, he makes us go at the top of the, at the top of the lineup. Um, he's a big part of what we are, how we're built. Uh, but I don't think it's been anything really different. It's just kind of hit a little bit of a rough patch. Uh, after six inning, he finished. And what did he ask you? Kikuchi? No, nothing. I just said, hey, you're going back out, do it again. Um, you know, his pitch count was in a good spot. Um, you know, score dictates a lot, too, I think, with, you know, um, how, how long we're going to let a starter go. Um, you know, we've talked quite a bit about, you know, he's talked to me quite a bit about wanting to pitch deeper in games, and, you know, you trust what you see. And when you see things like he was showing today, it's very easy to say, okay, go ahead, keep going. Um, so it was, it was a great, great day for him. What's that? The what? Oh, he said he wanted one more? Uh, he always wants one more. <laughs> he always wants one more. Um, just back to Kikuchi. Um, what's been the difference with his breaking balls over the last few starts? It, I think it's the, the slower curveball has been really good for him. Um, landing at OO and kind of stealing the strike and then just keeping hitters off of the slider and fastball, really. I think it's... When you have the you know different speeds, it's really tough, and when you're throwing you know strikes, it's even tougher. So, uh, I thought today slider was executed well, kind of ball to strike. I know that's something him and Pete work on constantly and talk about a lot, uh, but I think the curveball was just kind of the difference maker today. And then when you have 96, you know that makes it play even more. And just with the offense, uh, we've talked a lot about um, <laughs> that lately. Getting 12 runs today is that something that can jumpstart the guys a little bit? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you look at it where I think we had chances, bases loaded, you score one, and, you know, second and third, you score one. You know, you want, want to kind of kind of keep adding on. I thought George's at bat, the sack fly was big to kind of get that run in. Um, but, yeah, I think when you kind of continue to add on um, late, you know, Bij, Homer, SB, big double, um, that, that does, especially leading into an off day, it kind of gives you a big exhale and deep breath and say, okay, it's, um, it's coming. I was going to ask you about the exhale, but you just answered that. But just as far as, you know, the, the roller coaster goes, it's happened since last year, and now you've won four of five after losing six of nine, after winning 10 <laughs> of 13, after losing seven of nine. How, how Good do memory. You, yeah. 
I might have made some of that up. But how, how do you um, how do you stay on that ride while trying to get off and be more consistent, but not getting too caught up in the ups and downs? It's it's baseball. You know, I think it's you see it around the league a lot. You know, you you watch the bottom line, and it's you know this team is one you know, eight out of nine after, you know, losing six out of seven, it's weird. You know, I think that you, um, you always want to be consistent and, you know, the conversations are just continuing to be um, as positive and as consistent as you can. And, you know, we've talked a lot with the guys over the course of the year and it's, you know, we're at the point to where it's like, all right, who are we? What do we want to be? And let's, we got to do it from here on out. But um, the ups and downs are going to come. You want to try to stay out of the ones that we kind of went through earlier in May. And uh, you kind of just roll with it a little bit, but um, this group is this group is special. This group is cool. They they get it. Um, they don't try to do too much when things aren't going great. And uh, hopefully we can get on a little bit of a roll. John, just back to Springer for a second. You mentioned uh, before, not necessarily know if there's an ideal profile for for a leadoff hitter. What are the elements of his profile that you think matches for you guys in the leadoff spot? And uh, how do you like the balance between sort of the traditional thought leadoff hitter needs to see a lot of pitches where he can sometimes be aggressive and do some damage and isn't necessarily always going to be a guy who's going to you know see six or seven pitches? Right. Um, I think he well he's been doing it long enough to where he's you know he knows when to be aggressive and he knows when to kind of you know reel it in a little bit. Um, his skill set you know or excuse me skill set is just you know there's damage potential all the time and. Um, when his approach is on, you know, he's kind of showing the, the rest of the guys, you know, the, the way to go a little bit. Um, you don't want to take that away from a player. You don't want to tell him don't be aggressive. It's similar to Bo. Um, they kind of have a, you know, a way about him to where they're ready to roll from pitch one. But it's, uh, you know, it's cool. I think when you have a guy that can leave the yard and when you have a guy that can put together a good at bat at the same time and he can run, um, it's a pretty cool, unique skill set that he has. And uh, one more on you say as well. The last time out, you know, where you guys were at that point, uh, where what you were coming off of, the short starts, a uh, few tough losses, and for him to kind of really change the momentum, seemed to change the momentum on his team a little bit with his start. Uh, just, did you feel that that outing was maybe a bit more significant from a psyche standpoint, kind of how it changed maybe the vibes around the team at that point in time? The one in Miami? Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, he was as good as we'd seen him that day, and I think it carried over a little bit to today. But uh, yeah, I think when you can get that out of a, you know your number five starter, um, I think it puts everyone else in a pretty good spot. And this rotation, they kind of compete with one another. They want to go out and you know replicate what the guy you know the night before did. Uh, but yeah, I think when you have a guy that you feel really comfortable in um, consistently, it's a, it's a good feeling for sure. Hey John, just quickly on uh, the injuries, what was uh, Heineman dealing with, and then uh, Jimmy yesterday, if there's anything later on that. Yeah, Heine was like it's left side discomfort. Um, you probably saw the practice swings that he took. He was trying to talk us into staying in, but you want to be careful, especially with Kirk and the IL. Uh, we'll see how he is after the off day. Um, and Jimmy was just his knee had been barking a little bit, and I think getting over to first base a couple times and backing up home. Uh, wanted to be extra cautious with, with him. Um, you know, off day, I think tomorrow helps and kind of reevaluate when we get in on Tuesday. With Heineman not feeling great, would you consider having Varsho just there as the backup for a couple of days till Kirk comes back if it comes to that? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it will depend on how he feels. You know, if it's, um, if it's something to where, you know, he can't play, I think you explore other options. Um, but I think if it's something that can be managed, you know, Varsh. Um, he'll be ready to go, I think, if needed. Okay, thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys.